Greetings, huntsmen and huntresses. Dudes did then. Back again with Ruby Volume 9. Previously, we heard the story of John, now known as the Rusted Knight, and how when he came to Ever After, time flowed backwards for him. Originally, he was the last of our heroes to arrive in the Ever After, as when he was fallen, he spotted Crescent Rose's descent. But when he arrived on the beach, he came across a tree with fruit that acted like stopwatches. Time flew backwards for him, and so he has spent all his time in the Ever After, waiting for the arrival of Team Ruby. But when he tries to lead the group to his village, when they all encounter the curious cat, there's obviously some tension between the two. And as things erupt into a full-blown disagreement, the gang finds themselves caught in a thunderstorm, where those who are at a crossroads or conflict internally find themselves trapped in a maze of their own emotional damage. So John, Weiss, and Ruby are separated from why Yang and Blake. It is then that John finally tells his story, that he did meet Alex and was the rusted knight of the story, and much like the girls, he thought knowing the story would make things easier, he would know the role he needed to play. But things took a bit of a turn, as it turned out, Alex wasn't the only person who fell through the world. It was her and her brother, Lewis. And while Lewis was a clever and smart young man, Alex was a bit reckless. And as time went on in the Ever After, she came to grow cruel and ruthless, even going so far as to mistrust John and poison him, leaving him behind. And apparently, once Alex and Lewis made their way to the tree, well, you can tell from the fact that when Alex got out, there was no brother. But is there all to the story? Is John's misgivings toward the curious cat are understandable? But maybe there's just something he missed. Meanwhile, Blake and Yang are stuck in a situation that takes them finally opening up, and I mean finally, about their true feelings. Not keeping it all hidden or left unsaid, but just bringing it all out into the opening. Having the most beautiful moment in the series, like top-notch a plus quality. Meanwhile, when Weiss and Ruby confront the curious cat about what John said, it's obvious that the cat doesn't quite understand what their problem is. While they might have misgivings about him, he was simply being used, so he kind of used them back. And it becomes obvious that there was no actual ill will towards his action. At least he didn't assume he was doing anything ill. But the cat departs, leaving the group behind, feeling hurt by their comments about him being, well, making him out to be a villain. Freeing everyone from the Pundestor, they make their way to John's cabin, and what should have been a touching reunion as John presents Crescent Rose to Ruby ends up being an emphasis on her hesitation and her lack of faith in herself. She struggles to even touch the one thing that she seemed to be the most concerned about. Will Ruby be able to shake off her doldrums, or will this hole in her heart grow ever bigger. Join me as I find out, won't you? This episode contains themes which might be distressing for some viewers. Um, that's not good. Well, I'm ready for you to hurt me, Ruby. As usual. Hmm, this is a dice. So, that is an origami bird. Um, did, did someone just light the sun? Oh, oh god. Charming. Ugh, ain't doing so well, huh, kiddo? Oh, what the hell was that? Late? Oh, he's doing the white cat thing. I mean, white rabbit thing. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. Oh, um, um, John? What the heck is going on? Um, what the heck? Ah, uh, okay. Everything's made of paper. Oh, except the fish. Oh, origami people? Aw, adorable. Serve them. Uh, wait. Oh. <laughs> John is the hero. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, every day? How you've been doing this every day for how long? The paper pleasers? They live to please other people. And John is, is this a metaphor for John? I feel like there's a metaphor for John here somewhere. Oh, so they helped him. They are accident prone. <laughs> Aw, Ruby. He named him after everyone. <laughs> The eye. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be so utterly mortified by that. Oh, oh god, John. Seriously, 
How many years has it been? What the heck? A map? Oh, are those quiche? Huh. Uh, I feel like John has found nothing, has he? Oh boy. <sighs> Dang. So that's what's kind of hindered any kind of headway he could have made. I, I get the feeling that his need to try to save these paper people also comes from losing Penny. Oh jeez, man. <laughs> okay, so he wants to go out since he knows a lot of the areas and with juniper he can move around a lot faster so he'll scout things out while the girls kind of hang out here and get used to everything what could possibly go wrong this is a recipe for disaster oh john oh boy that great tree does not kill oh so the paper pleasers know that hey we're kind of a little too delicate if we could ascend we might be able to take on a form that's able to do more but john sees ascension as death he doesn't trust it so he's not allowing them to pass on. Huh. I wonder why. Why, why would that be? Oh. Oh, jeez. Okay. I understand the concepts that seem very problematic. This is like, hey, how about we break from our physical forms? It's like, um, that... The implication behind that is very dark and very problematic. Oof. It's not that they're... It's not that they're clumsy. They want to... Well... I mean, ascend. Oof. I don't know. This feels odd. Okay, I can see where John comes from. And the Ever After is very, very distressing. Is the Ever After trying to help Ruby cope with what happened to Penny? I don't know. Uh, uh, oof. Harsh, John. This, this is kind of the result of age. You kind of get a little jaded by everything that you've experienced. You stop being able to see things from a different perspective. Huh. Oh, was that his house? Oh no. It's the Jabberwalkers. Neo. Uh, okay, what's on your mind, Ruby? I know she's got some hang-ups about actually defending people. Oh, nice. Ooh, nice. Ugh. They still make such a great team. <laughs> they make an amazing team. Dude, the choreography here, holy crap. Like, yes, they are working even better than before. Dude, <laughs> what is this choreography? Nice. Oh, uh-oh, oh. <laughs> dude, oh, dude. Okay, I gotta admit, the choreography for this season has been... Oh, no. She's having a panic attack! Uh, Ruby? Oh, Cinder. Oh, oh, Penny. Oh, oh. Salem. Jeez. I... Oof. I don't think she's... I don't think she's ready for this. Oh, oh god! Um, bang. Okay. Well, she's made her presence known. Yeah. Oh, yeah, John, this is... Oh. <sighs> And there it is. Oh jeez, oh, Ruby. Oh jeez. Ooh. Whoa, Ruby. Oh jeez. Oh, guys. Oh. Yeah, Penny. I, I knew he wasn't gonna be okay with with what he did to Penny. But man, it's even worse because he's had years dwelling on that. That's the cruelest thing of all. Uh, <laughs> it's just to leave us on the sound of everything sing. Ah, oh, dude. Ugh. That was a special kind of heartbreaking. Ugh. You know, it's funny, too, because I've seen a few comments here and there just like, oh, filler in the fairy tale world, but like, no. The characters went through a lot. Like, after the fall of Beacon, things were bad. Thing things were really, really bad. But they tried to remain optimistic. And then they found out that Apparently there was no way to kill Salem, which is like, oh, so there's no way to win in their mind, which is worse. Because there's this overwhelming thought that they're fighting a losing battle. Now, there is no winning, there's just surviving. But after they went through the whole situation with, uh, what were those things called? The sleep things, the things that keep you in, like, your depression or uh, pretty much put you in a vegetative state, whereas you just kind of give up. You know, they were able to kind of bounce back 
distract from that, the apathy, wasn't it? Like, something like that? They were able to get through that, and things really started looking up at Atlas, because they had direction. You know, they were led by Ruby, but they were also following Ironwood, which seemed to be a strong foundation, but he buckled hard under everything. He went in the completely wrong direction. And then they came up with this last ditch crazy plan where they thought they were right, but it seemed as though they made everything work. Things things really fell apart hard. And while the others still have hope, you know, Ruby's plan didn't work. It was crazy. It worked out miraculously, but in the end, Penny lost her life. Atlas fell. Salem gained the relic. Like, like, what seemed like a good chance to get things kind of back on track completely fell apart in so many ways. So I don't blame her for being completely just despondent over it. Like, feeling like, I'm not okay. This is terrible. Everything has gone so horribly wrong. And her confidence has been shaken hard because so much has been lost. And John... <laughs> Like, John makes the most sense. You know, he's desperate to save what he can, even if it is just some place for the people who ugh, want to die. But it really is starting to seem like maybe this place is trying to teach him that death isn't the end. I don't know. There's a very profound message being put forward here that is very delicate. And I do not envy the team for trying to walk this fine line of what they've tried to write here. Cause, man, this was an interesting play. But they were right. Do you this? The themes on display here were have very, very heavy. And that argument, like, it was very heartbreaking. Like, I, I got, <laughs> I got kind of caught up in my emotions listening and watching that. Like, bravo to the voice actor. And I also kind of appreciate that Weiss, Yang, and Blake, I, I appreciate the moment where Blake got in, uh, Yang got in between Blake and Ruby, you know, you know in defense of her love. But they didn't lash out out at Ruby when she was going on that tirade. They didn't lash out at John. No, they tried to be as delicate and calm about the whole situation because, like, no, they're both going through something. Going through something hard. And John kind of lashing out at Ruby made a lot of sense because John has kind of deferred to Ruby in a lot of situations. You know, Ruby's plan, Ruby's ideas, Ruby's objectives. So him lashing out at her made a lot of sense. It was misguided and very unfair, all things considered, but he realized that. <sighs> and he was forced to make a very sad choice. And he has to live with that. Like, it, it made sense in the moment, but damn. To be the one who has to live with that. And Ruby feeling as though, you know, she has to stay chipper. She has to come up with a plan. She has to do this, she has to do that, possibly helping other people, but, you know, it's that feeling of she's the one who's spiraling right now. She's trying hard to keep it together, and she can't. Like, the problem was she was just kind of holding in a lot of emotions, and she just did not have it in her. But I, I didn't expect her to have a full-blown panic attack like that kind of got i should have expect i should have suspected it but i didn't see it come and the thing is i don't even know what to say about the fact that to a certain degree ruby is right nobody did try to get her to open up about what was going on but at the same time there were moments previously where they did, but she was just like, let's just move. Let's just do this. She tried to press forward. She tried to do what was expected of her, and the others just kind of gave her that space, thinking, okay, maybe she'll come around in time. But no, there was no correct way to approach this. They were trying to give her the time she needed, and I think they were hoping that, okay, she'll open up to us when she's ready. I feel like they knew something was up, but they didn't want to prep. And it's kind of obvious they kind of should have. But that's not an easy, easy choice to make. You know, Ruby always seems to be so bubbly, and it's unfortunate because it's just like this childish wish to be a hero has backfired so hard. And it's been completely shaken. You know, the faith that things will all work out in the end is pretty much gone. So the question remains how does she move past this? How does she get back on her feet when the, the little bit of faith she had is gone?
plot. I'm really fascinated where this is leading with both John and Ruby's characters. Because it's been obvious this is going to be Ruby's story, but I'm glad that they've also shown that this is also John's story. These are two people who have were hit the hardest by what happened. Not to say that Weiss, Yang, and Blake didn't go through some stuff, but no, they, they already went through their time of being really broken with the fall of Beacon and with the revelation about Salem. That was them, like, really breaking down. We, we've been through that with them. But Ruby was the last holdout. Ruby was the one who kept managing to get them through that trying her best every every situation she kept on mission and i think that that's what's really that's what we've been leading up to now that we're at that point and i actually kind of love that no she helped everyone else so this is their time to help her but at the same time jean needs a lot of help too it's a lot of help like what jean's going through like damn damn i could go on and on let me know your thoughts in the comment section below <laughs> it's hard to say this but what was your favorite part <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say that right now. I mean, it's just the team, the writing on this, and the dialogue for this has been just really good. I've really appreciated that, and I, I'm curious how we resolve a lot of it. Or maybe it's just something that's lingering on for the rest of the series. Who knows? But I'm glad we're having this moment. I've heard, ugh, I really gotta stop listening to freaking Ruby haters, because I, I love this show. I really do. But I, I've always hear people talk about, oh, Ruby is so immature, she always manages to come out on the end, and never seems to develop, and yada yada yada, and it's just like, no, she's optimistic, and there were... It's going to be a point where that optimism was broken. There was a reason why we never really dwelled on her relationship with her mother, Summer. Like, that, that's, that was always in the back of my mind. It's just like, we haven't really explored Ruby's relationship with Summer. Like, there's still a lot we don't know about Ruby. Like, has that never ever felt weird to people? Like, we don't really know that much about Ruby herself. We know plenty about Weiss. Damn, shit. We know pretty much everything about Weiss. And pretty much everything about Blake. Yang still got some spots here and there. But Ruby? She is the biggest mystery. And I am just ready to start really exploring our girl properly. So let me know your thoughts. Remember to subscribe for more Ruby. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.